Tencent used to be a tiny little company. At one point, they literally had less than $1,500 in their bank account. But now Tencent has recently become the 10th largest company in the world, with a total value of over $1.6 trillion, going on to control almost the entire internet and gaming industry. Riot Games, Epic Games, Ubisoft, Discord, Reddit, and even Tesla, quickly monopolizing the entire tech industry. And yet, funnily enough, almost no one's ever heard of this company. So how do they get so big so quickly, and why does no one really know their name? Well, by abusing the law, sabotaging the competition, abusing human rights, and working with the CCP, Tencent has risen to the top and shows no signs of stopping. Because Tencent isn't just a company, they are a weapon of the Chinese government. And now that Tencent's position at the top has been set in stone, the Chinese communists are now eager to exploit it to the fullest. Using Tencent's centralized structure, the CCP has massively increased its global surveillance, censorship, and control. And right now, governments around the world are doing everything they can to destroy Tencent. Because Tencent is one of the most dangerous companies in the world, and it's time we talked about it. You see, at first, Tencent was just a simple startup company. In late 1998, Tencent was founded and they released their first product just months later. The founders started the company after seeing the popularity of foreign instant messaging services, but they thought they could release a better version that focused on China, and so they did just that, releasing OICQ just a few months after the company's launch. But even this early on, Tencent weren't stranger to dirty tactics. Their first bump came by stealing the name of a foreign competitor. They named their product OICQ, adding the word open to the already popular app ICQ. But these dirty tactics worked wonderfully, and the master program would quickly gain steam. It started at just 500 users, but every day after the release, more and more people flooded in, eventually causing many problems, as the server infrastructure in China was so expensive in the early 2000s. In fact, Tencent almost bankrupted itself multiple times trying to accommodate their massive growth, and the situation was made even worse when they were sued for stealing the name. But after arranging some deals with venture capital firms and the CCP, the company got through its early growing pains, although they eventually had to change the app's name to QQ. However, it was these early venture capital firms' investments into Tencent that would turn out to be one of the most valuable investments in history, because Tencent's QQ gained a million users in its first year, and 50 million in the next year. And so within just a span of a few years, Tencent monopolized the instant messaging market in China. But the founders knew that this was just the beginning. They wanted greater things. They wanted to take on Silicon Valley headfirst, and bring about a new golden age of technology in China. The company would keep reinvesting its profits, where they would buy other services and swallow them up into QQ, meaning that QQ grew to be the first Chinese mega app, letting users control nearly every aspect of their lives from one place. They added shopping, social media, online dating, banking, antivirus software, everything you could think of. And as Tencent did this, they pushed out their competitors. But this quick success didn't go unnoticed by the Chinese government. Within five years of its founding, Tencent and the CCP were building a deep and well-connected relationship. And so both Tencent and the government would exploit their partnership to the fullest, to control both the markets in China, as well as its people. Because China was seeing that technology would be pivotal for their plans of global dominance. As outlined in the 2049 plan, China has been destined to be the number one global superpower, but the only way they could do this was through technology, through influencing the world through the internet. But we're still talking about the early days. No one fully knew how powerful social media would be, but the Chinese government did understand that it would be pivotal to their success. And so the Chinese government and Tencent grew the company into becoming a massive conglomerate, hoovering up features and companies, turning a simple messaging service into an empire. And to do this, they would crush their competitors. Like in late 2010, when Tencent tried to supplant the most popular Chinese antivirus app 360 Safeguard. First, they released their own version called QQ Doctor, which they of course integrated into QQ, giving them an immediate 40% market share. But when the makers of 360 Safeguard refused to give up, they made it so that QQ would stop working if it detected 360 Safeguard on the same system. Tencent then used these tactics to bully their opponents into submission, and it was making them an unstoppable monopoly. A monopoly that would be the perfect tool in China's arsenal. Or so it seemed, because this particular case of monopolistic actions eventually took the notice of the Chinese Supreme Court. They knew they had to do something about their baby Tencent, as businesses and the elites of China were outraged by Tencent's actions. They'd been getting away with way too many aggressive actions for years against their own Chinese populace. And so with the CCP eventually stepping in, it looked like their dreams of monopoly might never come true. However, instead of punishing Tencent, the CCP stunned everyone by deciding to let them grow. Instead of regulating Tencent's growth, the CCP gave them a free hand. 
In other words, the Supreme Court took an extremely lenient approach, and that decision set a very clear precedent. Making clear the very strong relationship between Tencent and the CCP. And with the CCP protecting Tencent, nobody could touch the company. In fact, Tencent's own executive boards were littered with CCP officials. The two were so intertwined that Tencent was basically an extension of the CCP. And so the next part of Tencent's strategy was to exploit this partnership to the fullest. Now in this period of the early 2010s, Tencent was making billions from QQ. And with no anti-monopoly laws, piles of cash and the blessings of the CCP, Tencent was free to expand their monopoly and buy companies by the dozen. A lot of these were buyouts of their Chinese competitors, like their $448 million investment into the Chinese search engine Sogu.com. But soon, lots of these companies would be foreign as well. And it was actually these foreign Western companies that would become Tencent's next target, with Tencent buying up 92% of Riot Games in 2011, also buying stakes in major game companies like Epic Games and Blizzard. And these weren't just good investments, these moves were motivated politically. They gave Tencent lots of foreign sway and power, and thus giving the CCP more influence over Western society. Because owning foreign companies is exactly the kind of soft power Beijing is looking for. It's all part of their 2049 plan to become the world's superpower. And through Tencent, they were able to expand their influence and make major profits. And in 2011, Tencent released the mobile version of their QQ app, WeChat. Immediately, this was a massive hit and would go on to log over 1 billion active users. But Tencent also turned WeChat into a mega app, in the same way as QQ. It became the homepage for tons of popular Chinese apps, and Tencent's version of PayPal, WeChat Pay, takes a cut from everything bought over the app. And so by 2015, Tencent was making over $3 billion from WeChat. And of course, this isn't just Tencent profiting from the success. The CCP now being so fully entrenched into Tencent's upper management that there became no doubt that Tencent was just a weapon of the Chinese government. For example, Tencent literally makes their employees celebrate a special holiday commemorating the government, with the 15th of July being a party member day at Tencent. And so of course with Tencent's growing power over the world, the CCP were very keen to use this influence to enforce their censorship techniques. And this close integration is all a part of China's grand plan for technology. But it wouldn't seem like this just from looking at Tencent's early story. On paper, they look just like any other startup, battling for investments, trying to keep up with growth, reinvesting everything. It seemed to everyone that Tencent was just the equivalent of a Silicon Valley startup. And when it comes to Tencent's image, this is exactly what they want you to think. China portrays its companies just like any other, but in reality, they're designed and built to become another part of the CCP. They use these companies like weapons, and that's how they've gone from only having a thousand dollars to becoming a multi-billion business in just a few years. I mean, it's hard to underestimate how early the CCP were involved in Tencent, and as it grew, the influence of the CCP grew as well. So once Tencent looked like it was going to be the next big thing, the CCP would continue to encourage its growth. They gave it all the monopolies it could want in exchange for closer control, giving the Tencent executives hundreds of millions, all in return for the power they had gained. Well, Tencent is a private company with Chinese characteristics. In China, pretty much every company that's made it big is only big because it has links to the Communist Party. Here's Tencent CEO Pony Ma and another famous tech CEO, Jack Ma, no relation, clapping during a speech Xi Jinping gave two months ago inside the Great Hall of the People. Boy, they were given great seats. In that speech where everyone was forced to clap, Xi Jinping said that the Communist Party would maintain leadership over all tasks. That includes tech companies. Both Jack and Pony were also honored at that event for their outstanding contributions to China's economy. Which is why the CCP is now dominating the corporate landscape, and now has de facto management of all its large tech companies. Huawei, Alibaba, ByteDance, and Tencent, despite beginning as dreams of entrepreneurs, have all now been controlled by the CCP. And all the other Chinese billionaires who don't capitulate to the CCP's demands often end up in prison or just magically disappearing. And so with this context in mind, it should be no surprise that by 2011, Tencent had nearly 6,000 CCP members within its ranks. And that same year, the CCP saw fit to install their own committee into Tencent's leadership structure. Through this committee, the CCP took complete control of all of Tencent's apps, and through Tencent's apps QQ and WeChat, the CCP would go on to control every aspect of the Chinese internet. Every message that goes through these apps is subject to a set of algorithms and keyword checks, going past all of the government sensors, which is why some words are outright blocked, whilst others are flagged and put a target on your back, with many Chinese citizens being imprisoned for saying the wrong things. And also, any image you send is also scanned against a database of known banned images and censored. 
Within these systems, the CCP can censor the public discourse almost completely. Anything that criticizes the CCP, anything related to their opponents, or anything that doesn't match their so-called socialist principles is removed. But it goes beyond just censorship, because these apps govern so many parts of everyday life, giving the CCP access to all sorts of private information, payment information, actual location, who you're associating with. This all feeds into the CCP's social credit system, helping the government create an incredibly detailed picture of whoever they want, all based on where they can learn from their phone. So, picture your life in a place where everything you do, what you buy, how you behave, is tracked. The government gives you a score, and the score is a measure of how trustworthy you are as a citizen, and determines what you're allowed to do, like ever. Boarding a train, getting a mortgage, all goes back to this score. It's called social credit. But before we continue, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Guardio. Now, with all the data concerns that Tencent is bringing to your online privacy, Guardio serves as the perfect defense against this. Guardio is a web extension that you can add to any browser to protect you from cyber threats. With Guardio detecting threats before they reach your browser and cause any harm, unlike traditional solutions that only remove threats once they're on your device. Which is really important because in the past, I've seen friends just click on a wrong website link and had their computers destroyed with viruses. And that's why Guardio is so important in preventing this from happening in the first place. And they will perform a free security scan that only takes 30 seconds to detect existing threats found on the user's browser. And after completing the scan, users can continue to a seven day free trial to remove existing threats and enable real time protection. With Guardio users, both free and premium, being able to access their dashboard at any time to run the scan and track their activity. And this identity monitoring is cross platform, so if you sign up through your mobile, you'll get real time alerts once your data is breached or leaked, meaning that you can take action immediately. So it's no surprise that Guardio is trusted by over 1 million users. And now they have an exclusive offer for you guys with 20% off the monthly subscription. So if you want a clean and secure browsing, experience. Again, go to guard.io slash moon, link in the description and check out that affordable premium plan for full protection. So if Tencent could so successfully control China, why not develop the system around the entire world? This would be the perfect stepping stone for China's plans of global dominance, which is why Tencent has bought so many foreign companies. They went after the games companies that we've already mentioned. And on top of this, they had their eyes on social media sites. If they could influence them or directly interfere with the public opinion in other countries, they would buy the social media app, as it enabled the CCP to expand its influence and censorship overseas. And it's very likely that Tencent used their ownership stakes in foreign companies to push them away from saying anything that might upset the CCP Possibly the most famous incident of this was at the Hearthstone tournament in 2019. Blake Strong, one of the competitors, had their prize revoked and was banned after openly supporting the Hong Kong Freedom Fighters. Blizzard, which is partially owned by Tencent, completely refused to back down even after the intense worldwide criticism. And as you'd expect, other companies could see that Chinese capitulation was a bad idea. Tencent understood that they could easily manipulate foreign companies into towing the party line, and by controlling Western companies, they could control Western culture. And it goes way beyond just social media sites and games companies. The manager of the Houston Rockets tweeted a support towards Hong Kong, and in response, Tencent refused to air any of their games. It looked like a lengthy standoff was about to happen. But instead of fighting it back against this injustice, against this totalitarian regime, both the manager and the NBA itself completely folded to Tencent. Yeah, we apologize. Um, you, know, you know, we love China, we love you know, playing there. Both releasing public apologies and asking China for forgiveness for their inappropriate actions. These successes have only made Tencent bolder. They weren't just going to silence individual people, they were going to implement blanket censorship into their platform. In November of 2019, pro democracy candidates won key victories in Hong Kong. When Chinese Americans tried to talk about this on their American WeChat accounts, they got banned. One user from Texas said the pro China candidates totally lost in a group chat and was later removed from the platform. This kind of removal has been common in China for years, but now it's spreading outside of the country at an alarming rate seeping into all of the Western countries. ByteDance, the Chinese giant that owns TikTok, followed suit and started censoring on their platform as well, banning one US teenager who brought attention to the CCP work camps, removing all of her videos on the topic. I mean, CCP censorship abroad has ramped up so much in the past few years, and it's all been facilitated by these giant companies like Tencent. But possibly the most sinister development is related to Tencent buying parts of social media companies. When the news broke a few years ago that the Chinese giant was investing $150 million into Reddit, the site went into uproar. Immediately, a picture from the Tiananmen Square protest received over 200,000 upvotes. But whilst Tencent didn't rise to the challenge with this particular post, Reddit has a very shaky history of removing posts related to Hong Kong and other Chinese pressure points. In fact, I have a whole video going into this called The Tragic Tale of Reddit. But the most concerning thing about Tencent's ownership of Reddit is the user data. Because in an Amnesty International report on companies, Tencent scored zero out of 100 on its treatment of data. This was because of massive problems with transparency and when the data 
ended up. Now that Tencent owns a substantial part of Reddit, they have access to all of the data. And not only this, but they have huge sway within the company, as their investments represent more than 10% of Reddit's value. And Reddit's just the tip of the iceberg here. Discord, for example, is also involved with Tencent, but to an even greater degree. In fact, Tencent was involved in the creation and funding of Discord from the beginning, and over time they've poured more and more money into the company, all while the Chinese government pours more and more money into Tencent becoming a vicious cycle. And this is all for a reason, because if Discord can host the world's conversations, China has eyes everywhere. As the data that Discord collects, as to Tencent's vast collection of user data on the West. From all these sources, Tencent starts to have access to information about the entire world. And of course, if Tencent has access to this, then so does the CCP. This is all part of China's plan to control the global population. And that's why Tencent isn't just interested in these investments as purely financial, because Discord and Reddit influence hundreds of millions of people, if not billions. And by now, everyone knows the power of social media and public opinion. I mean, entire election campaigns live and die on the internet now. And so with Tencent's massive investments into huge social media sites, they can then have direct access to these mechanisms that sway public opinion. And by subtly influencing these companies, the CCP can indirectly shift public opinion and interfere with discussion. Every foreign investment is just more soft power for China, all while China bans all of the Western social media sites, banning all Western interference into their internet. Going so far as to to build the great Chinese firewall. Websites such as Google, YouTube, and Facebook are either blocked completely or slowed to a crawl and throttled to an almost unusable state. Known as the Great Firewall of China, this censorship engine allows the Chinese government to regulate the internet and protect its citizens from dangerous content. But this is only one part of China's three-pronged technological attack. Tencent buys out companies and uses this influence to interfere with the West, with companies like ByteDance working in tandem with Tencent. And for those who don't know, ByteDance is the company that created TikTok, which has been one of the CCP's greatest accomplishments of all time, having access to data from 1.5 billion users and controlling the hearts and minds of Generation Z. And although TikTok has publicly stated that the information doesn't end up in the Chinese government's hands, unfortunately what they say doesn't really matter much, because TikTok's user user agreement gives them the legal right to share data with ByteDance, the Chinese parent company. And ByteDance is no different than Tencent. It's also managed by the CCP, and in fact it grew from the ground up in the exact same way as Tencent. And the thing is, the US government knows this, and this is what led to the Trump administration moving to ban the app in 2020. And that's why the FBI is investigating Tencent and ByteDance. And its unchallenged influence on the world is the second part of China's attack. And then the third way that China is using technology to gain soft power is through Huawei, the Chinese infrastructure and hardware giant. Huawei has been building tech infrastructure around the world for years, and now their parts are instrumental in cellular and information infrastructure across the world. And Tencent and Huawei work perfectly together. You see, Huawei provides the hardware and the infrastructure, allowing the CCP to get direct access to billions of devices and networks around the world. And Tencent then provides the software. Through their apps and their investments, they give the CCP an unlimited information source on the Western populace. And so with both of these companies, China has an incredibly detailed picture of every aspect of Western society. But only recently have governments woken up to the fact that this is such a terrible idea. With a Chinese-made part in nearly every cell tower or 5G mast, it's almost impossible to know anymore if privacy even exists. And it isn't just as simple as replacing the parts. Huawei's infrastructure is so widespread that it would shut down the entire network if you removed it. And the UK is the perfect example of this. After the US found out how much of a threat Huawei is to the world, the UK was then forced to remove it, giving Huawei until the end of 2027 to remove Huawei parts from its infrastructure. But it turns out that this five years just isn't enough anymore. Huawei claims they need much longer to do this. And I think there's a reason why. Because as I mentioned at the start, this is part of China's grand strategy. It's a new type of warfare. This is the Cold War 2.0. Because by using these tech companies to expand China's technological reach, it's given them massive influence over the West. And massive revolutionary potential for espionage. The fuel to sway Western culture. And it goes way beyond just this. This control of technology, with Huawei, ByteDance, and Tencent's global presence, give the CCP incredible leverage over the entire world. However, there is some light at the end of the tunnel, because it hasn't been all plain sailing for Tencent and other Chinese tech giants. And the first hint of trouble didn't come from foreign pushback. It didn't come from the US. In fact, it came from the CCP itself. You see, China is in an absolute nightmare with COVID. And we've already released a video going into the massive problems China's economy faces. And so right now, to consolidate power, Xi Jinping has moved to take much more control of tech companies. He started doing this in 2021, when the Chinese tech giants were given anti-monopoly fines 
totaling around $3.25 billion. And so of course, Tencent was included in this. And as a result, they saw their stock drop massively. These same practices that built Tencent into the CCP's instruments of power were now being punished. This was despite the fact that these moves had been given the green light just years before. And fines really aren't the only weapon the CCP is using either. Because after multiple Chinese tech billionaires started stepping out of line and showing their disloyalty to the CCP, it would all disappear. Only to return months later in a Chinese courtroom. Jack Ma, one of the founders of Alibaba, spoke out against the government, and after doing so, he disappeared for years. The Chinese government cracking down on big tech companies, and Alibaba founder Jack Ma hasn't been seen in public for two months. Only returning recently in exile. And so as a result of this tech crackdown, Tencent has been going through some hard times over the past year. At the beginning of 2022, Tencent was approaching the $1 trillion mark in their valuation. But from then, their stock prices began to fall. And every time the CCP announced another measure, they fell even more. And so today, Tencent has lost over $650 billion in its valuation, now sitting at around $300 billion, with more losses expected. This downward trend hasn't come out of the blue though, it's a result of multiple factors building up in China right now. It's sky high rent costs, the burst of their economic bubble, and their controversial zero COVID policy, which entails massive lockdowns and even more intense control of the population. And because China has been in so much trouble recently, the government is now facing massive protests. In fact, China has been set on fire by riots and caused for Xi Jinping's removal, and Tencent had an awful time managing this movement towards freedom, forcing the tech giants to censor their platforms even more, with the CCP ordering them to take on way more censors to fill the void. However, the CCP thinks that Tencent isn't doing enough to control the population, causing the government to lose trust in its ability to help the state. And this is a huge reason for the company's devaluation, as the truth is still pouring out on China's social media, embarrassing the CCP globally. And one of the key flaws in Tencent's system is that the protesters have found ways of beating Tencent's algorithm. One of the most famous methods is to hold up a blank sign. Because people understand its meaning, but the bots and censors tasked with policing WeChat and QQ don't. Protesters also share vague messages without obvious meanings to voice their support, which are also hard to recognize by bots and censors. And whilst this is great for the Chinese population, this is awful for Tencent, and even worse for the Chinese government. Which is why it's uncertain whether the conglomerates will ever recover from this. And this isn't the only part of China's tech plan that is falling apart. Recently, the FBI has been making very strong statements condemning Tencent. TikTok, with China's control of recommendation algorithms, among many, many other problems. And his voice is being joined by many around the world. Huawei is also in a similar situation, being removed from many countries in Europe and being completely banned by the US government. And it seems like Tencent is next. However, Chinese technological infiltration isn't a problem that's going to go away very soon, as Tencent still owns massive portions of major Western companies. In fact, they're a vital cog of the West's economic system. And even with the US government's concerns, TikTok still hasn't been banned, with their revenue actually going up despite the economic hardship. And its influence and impact on the world just seems too large to disappear. And Huawei's physical influence will remain in global infrastructure for years, even with countries actively trying to remove it as fast as possible. So while everyone's starting to wake up to the threat that China poses to the world, the damage has been done, and the process of removal of Tencent, Huawei, and TikTok may take years, if not decades. And it remains unclear where Tencent's future lies.